What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am building yet another gaming PC, uh, not just for fun this time around, or for my dad. I've been doing a lot of dad builds lately. This one is actually because NVIDIA, the folks at NVIDIA, have called me out to participate in one of their challenges. Uh, to be specific, the GTX 950 Budget PC Challenge, where essentially I go ahead and try to build a system for under $600, that's my maximum budget that I have to play with, uh, and it has to feature uh, a GTX 950, because that's kind of what this whole contest is promoting. Ah, connecting the dots. Then I have to send the computer into NVIDIA. They go ahead and test it, and they run a few different games and benchmarks. I think they're doing 3D Mark, Fire Strike, uh, as well as Grand Theft Auto V, and there's a bunch of other ones. Um, but uh, essentially, they go ahead and, and put a load on it and see how it performs against the competition. And then based on that, uh, which is the main criteria is performance, how well your system performs, and also based on uh, your frugality. If you can go even below $600, uh, you get some extra points there. And then lastly, uh, there, there are a few points that get added due to aesthetics. Now granted, if you're dealing with a budget build at this price point, you're not going to be able to make it look super tricked out and fancy, uh, you know, with like LEDs and custom sleeve cables and all that, but I think they're what they're kind of really going for is like cable management and that sort of thing. Does it look like you just plug things in and called it a day, or did, it, did you actually take your time and route things nicely and, and make it nice and neat? So, based on those three pieces of criteria, uh, I'm going to totally win this challenge. It's just no contest. Now I'm totally joking. Everyone has a fair chance of winning. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the parts really quick. Of course, starting with the GTX 950. There it is. Uh, this one in, in particular is the EVGA Super Super Clock. This is one that uh, I have actually benchmarked. You can go watch my video on it if you haven't already. NVIDIA actually sent this card over to me, and they said that I could use it uh, for the purpose of this challenge. Even though this is a $170 card, uh, I'm only counting it as $160 in my $600 budget, and that, that was approved by NVIDIA, so you can't yell at me for that. It's not cheating. It is super, super clocked, so it's factory overclocked. Now, manual overclocking is allowed in the competition, so I am going to be pushing this a bit further. Uh, granted, it's already overclocked pretty extremely, but there is a bit more uh, margin there that I could go ahead and, uh, and uh, push it to. So I'm going to be doing that, as well as uh, the CPU of choice is the Core i5-4690K. Now many of you guys who follow me on Instagram might have seen a picture that I had recently posted of all these components uh, set up on this table right here, and you might have noticed that this was actually a 4690K, and this motherboard, in fact, was a Z97 version of, of this H81 uh, chipset board. So why did I change? Why did I go from an unlocked overclockable uh, CPU to a non k skew one. Well, the fact of the matter is, is once I had added up the entire uh, price range, or the entire cost of all these components, the final cost was $599.93, or something ridiculously, like, like, like I had a nickel left uh, t before t tapping out on the budget. So what I decided was to uh, kind of push back a little bit and kind of cut the cost down. I actually got this to uh, just over 550 bucks by going with a non-K SKU with the processor and an H81 uh, non-Intel non chipset right there so I think I think that's gonna give me some extra points honestly the overclocking uh, wouldn't have done very well anyway because I had I had barely had any more room for a, a CPU cooler which means my temps would have been awful I mean this was the CPU cooler I was gonna be try to trying to overclock with and I was just looking at this thing going yeah I could probably get like a you know a moderate overclock on here but is it really worth like pretty much maxing out my budget and how many points am I gonna get docked for that you know most of these tests are gaming and a lot of them you know a couple of them are CPU intensive we all know that GTA 5 is a very CPU intensive game but based on all things considered I figured this would be a better value and probably get me a higher score in the end if I went with a non-K skew uh, and a cheaper motherboard to really shave the cost down. So, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, that was a bit of a digression there, but hopefully it sheds a little bit of, of light on uh, on my product rationale. So moving on to the memory, we've got this 8 gig kit from Team. It's their Elite Plus series. Uh, it doesn't actually look too bad for the 35 or 36 bucks that I paid for it. Uh, so you do get two 4 gig sticks right there, and it is 1600 speed. So uh, not too shabby for, for uh, under 40 bucks there. For storage, honestly, all we need is something to boot on. Uh, it doesn't need to be super fast, really. We're, we're not testing boot times in this competition, so I'm just going with a 320 gig WD Caviar Blue Drive, which is actually fairly reliable for the 20 bucks that it costed uh, that it cost on Newegg. Uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. And then last, but certainly not least, actually this might be least as well. Last and least uh, is the case and power supply because, damn, this is like as budget as it gets. This is a Logisys, where's the box? There's a box. It's a Logisys that. 
I'm just going to call it a that. It's a that. It's that case right there. Uh, and you'll notice it also comes included with a 480 watt power supply. Oh god, that's horrifying. Contemporary mid tower case. Yeah, my ass. It's more like, more like temporary mid tower case. I paid 40 bucks. It was like 39 dollars for for this. I know it's 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 scary. So um, here's here's my other rationale for this. It's a su super dirty. Wow. You hear that? I think I'm gonna, I could puncture a hole through it with my finger. So the reason why I went with this setup is because I literally only need this system to function for the few hours that NVIDIA will be testing it for. If it explodes because of the shit power supply, five seconds after NVIDIA sends it back to me, I'm still in the clear and I'm st I still qualify. That's also why I'm going with this. This is literally the cheapest combo I could find. Like I said, 40 bucks for both components. So you can really see where I, where I, where I cut corners here. Think about it, this was, what is it, $240, $230 around, and then $160 or $170, all right? Now, all of this combined is probably like $150 bucks, or $160, bucks. so uh, a fraction of what just these two components alone cost. So just a little bit of uh, insight there when you're dealing with this kind of, uh, it's a very niche and uh, kind of rare instance where you're building a system like this. Only to win a challenge is the only time you should follow anything I'm saying. Uh, but there you guys have it. Those are all the parts, and I've been rambling on way too long now. Uh, so I should probably just go ahead and shut up and build this thing. Let's do it. All right, so first we pop this guy off. Lift up the arm. Put your arms up. Ah. Get the golden arrow, Jimmy. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, this is, this is what I do when I'm... I'm filming time lapses and you watch all those time lapses, I'm just talking to myself, saying stupid stuff. Memory time! So, uh, forgot to mention, this is a micro ATX board. Uh, again, the case pretty much determined what form factor board I'd be using. Because I, I knew that I could save a killing on a uh, case of power supply combo. And it just happened to be micro ATX, so that's the, uh, the motherboard size I went with. Now we're going to go ahead and install this super high-end cooler. This is not going to look pretty, but it'll work. Now let's install the motherboard. So I've got my standoffs already standing off. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and pop this IO shield in here. All right, motherboard installation complete. So while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and just install the uh, hard drive here. I'm actually surprised that these hard drive trays are not utter shite. I mean, they're actually decent. Granted, they are plastic, uh, but they are toolless. You can go ahead and just uh, got these little notches. It's one of the notch ones. You got notches on both sides. Uh, that's interesting. Do they snap off? All right, these things are utter shite. All right, so there we go. Go ahead and pop that in. And then we'll take care of these front panel connectors here. So actually what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna route all of this through this little opening here. And starting off with our USB 3.0, route all of them through the bottom. All right, so we got USB, HD audio, where you at, brah? Oh, it's up here. Don't tell me I'm not gonna be able to reach there. No. No. I mean, I guess I could get away with it. Video card will go right over there. But it does look pretty tight. I mean, I can try it. I can try it right now. It might work. It does work. It looks terrible down here, but who cares? Let's go ahead and bolt this sucker down. Granted, I would suggest installing your front panel connectors first, uh, as far as like power and reset and your hard drive LED, all the little ones, because those are kind of nasty and difficult to install once you've got your video card in there, but I'm a pro, so do as I say, not as I do. Ah! Let's go ahead and route these guys on together. Whole family hard drive LED. Put the hard drive LED in there. Just like that. Just like that. And then you got your power LED. Get the plus and minus. You know, it don't matter. Pop that in there right there. Go ahead and pop the other one in there. What else you got over here? You got a, you know that reset switch like the back of your hand. Rebooting systems all day. Shit. All right, we're all good. Front panel connectors, done. Done deal. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug in my SATA drive. While I'm over here, 
Alrighty, let's go ahead and move on to the dreadful power supply cables here. Starting with our big guy. Boom! Right at the top. Curve it around. Slam it down. Yeah! Just like that. Just like that. Put it in my seat apart, baby. I won't be surprised if some of you unsubscribe after watching this video. Hell, I might unsubscribe. Why the hell did I subscribe from me? What's wrong, Kyle? I don't to make good videos anymore, Kyle. Apparently my alter ego in building a computer is an illiterate redneck. So there is a little bit of a cutout here for power supply, or for the uh, motherboard. Now, bear in mind, this power supply only has a four pin EPS uh, CPU connector. The motherboard, on the other hand, is an eight pin. Now you can still plug in a four pin plug from a power supply into an eight pin connector on your motherboard. The only thing is, is that you won't really have much overclocking potential, but that's okay, because we're not overclocking here. We don't even have an, uh, an unlock skew on our CPU, so that is just fine for now. Now if I can just get this damn plug in, then, oh, redneck how will be put right at ease. Yeah! Oh yeah! So a quick side note here, you guys may have realized that since this power supply only has a four pin uh, CPU connector, it probably doesn't have an 8-pin PCIe connector either, and you would be correct in that assumption. Instead, it's got two Molex plugs right here. Uh, so we're going to have to use some adapters to get this video card powered. Uh, I do have these uh, two adapters here. They are identical. It's essentially Molex to 6-pin. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and wire these up to our power supply cables. And I've actually had these adapters lying around uh, just for several months, maybe even years. Uh, they're just kind of taken from other video cards that I've owned in the past or that I still own and that I thought I'd never have a use for, but here we are. Uh, and then, all right, so we've got, we've got our adapters wired in there. So now we have two six pin connectors coming from the power supply, essentially, which is one step closer, I suppose, to uh, getting connected to that video card. So, missing piece of the puzzle is this guy right here. You basically got two female 6-pin PCIe going to one 8-pin uh, male. So we're going to go ahead and plug these in. Like so. Definitely a kind of a, a long-winded workaround to get this thing going, but it is going to work, I assure you. And now, voila, power. Men crave it. Women want it. Now, since these uh, little Molex connectors here coming off of these adapters aren't being used for anything, I'm just going to go ahead and clip them off just because uh, it'll clean up a little bit of the cable management to make things a bit more tidy. So, here we go. If you, uh, if you get squeamish easily, I suggest looking away. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Love circumcising cables. Apparently, it feels better for the female connectors. All right, and we're at the final stretch, folks. Let's go ahead and wrap this up here. How's that looking on camera? Look all right? Looking good? Are you doing all right there? Ah! Ah! All right, we've made it over to the other side of the case. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in because we do want at least that fan running for a little bit of airflow. Uh, it is set to exhaust. I, if, if I was using this system long term, I'd probably flip it to intake because it is the only case fan. I'd rather have positive air pressure than negative air pressure. Speaking of which, this is a great time to mention my new Stay Positive shirt, which you can see right here. Stay Positive. Now for sale on the Awesome Sauce merch store. Look at this. Look at this. See, it's the blue arrows, the intake, more intake, less exhaust, positive air pressure. Yeah, that's a stay positive. Uh, boob sag and and uh, and belly sweat are not included, so you'll be rest assured that this is a sanitary shirt from the get-go. Go ahead and check them out, guys. I don't know if I'm going to be restocking them, so eat that shit up. Eat it up. All right, and I think that's pretty much going to do it for cable management, other than... Maybe one more guy right here. This surprisingly has a decent amount of room behind the motherboard tray. Uh, you don't get an inch or anything like that. It's probably more like 
uh, half an inch I'd say. A lot of cases at this price point don't have any kind of cable routing options behind here. It's just literally flat. But I think we're pretty much wrapped up here, guys. So um, let's go ahead and try put, putting the side panel on. That's always a good indication if you've uh, done enough cable management properly. If the side panel goes on with relative ease, which it it does, I just, I'm stupid and I can't get in the grooves properly. And in there. There we go. Not sure what that was about. Alright, let's do a test boot. Plugging in. Plugging in! Power on. Power on! Power button. Power button! Go! Ugh. Come on, I hear it. There we go. CPU fan looks good, and the GPU fans are spinning. Yes! That is good. That is good. The video card is working. The adapter situation here, a little Frankenstein solution, has been a success. Now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this into a monitor. Because that, that's still... I still need to get a, a video signal. That might not happen. I don't, I don't know yet. Alright, and here is the computer. Yes, listen to it hum. It's actually fairly quiet. And uh, here it is, uh, installing, currently installing Windows 8.1 Pro, which is a good indication that I've built this thing successfully. At least for now, there are no red flags. Uh, like I said, it'll probably give this power supply a few weeks before it explodes. But in the meantime, for the purpose of this contest, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Honestly, this isn't a bad system. Apart from the power supply, which you can swap out, it's not, it's not riveted, so you can just, it's got four standard Phillips head screws there. You can just swap this power supply out, put a decent one in there that's maybe 80 plus bronze or, you know, from a brand that you trust. And honestly, this is a fairly decent system that can do 1080 gaming at high settings for most AAA titles right now, which is pretty damn good for a $550 system, if I do say so myself. So I'm pretty happy with what I accomplished today. Uh, you guys let me know in the comments what you think. If you guys think uh, that I'm totally screwed in this challenge, or do you think I stand a chance against the competition? Um, and uh, yeah, also let me know what you thought of the build, uh, the actual format. Usually I do a time lapse, as you guys are familiar with. I've been doing a lot of those lately. Decided to switch it up a bit this time around. So let me know which one you like better or if you would kind of like a mixture of the two because I definitely see the, the pros and cons to each. But that's going to do it for now guys. Go ahead and like this video if you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, I'll see you all in the next video.